Hello, welcome back to our astronomy unit, Earth and Space. Today we're talking about apparent motions of the stars and planets. This is part 9.2. So when we talk about apparent daily motion of the stars, this is what we see from Earth, how stars move through the sky. Is the sun really rising and setting though around the Earth? Is the moon really changing shape during the month? So when we talk about apparent motion, we have to remember that this is discussing what we see as observers from the Earth. What is really happening? Is the sun rising and setting? No, it's the Earth that's actually moving. And so we see the sun moving, but it's really just the Earth's motions that cause the sun to have apparent motions. So stars make paths through the sky. If you use a camera and take pictures every few minutes and put those pictures all together in an image, you could see their motion through the sky or their apparent motion since it's really the Earth that's rotating that causes these motions. The sun's path in New York is always shaped like an arc. Polaris is always located above the North Pole and stars near the North Pole appear to circle around Polaris. Since Polaris is, a, is, is um, lined up with the North Pole's axis, therefore, if we take pictures um, face towards the North Pole, it will appear that all the stars circle Polaris, which I'm going to show you a picture of that in a minute. If the stars appear to move 15 degrees per hour, in three hours, how much would they appear to move? So if the stars are appearing to move 15 degrees per hour. So first of all, why 15 degrees per hour? That's a, a special number. Remember, the Earth is actually rotating 15 degrees per hour. So if we take a look at the stars, they'll appear to move 15 degrees per hour. So in three hours, 3 times 15 would be 45 degrees that they would seem to change in three hours. If a star appears to move 90 degrees, how many hours have passed? We're dividing 90 by 15, and we'll see that six hours will have passed. So here's a picture showing, showing some star trails, and you could see that these are the circular formations created by the stars. Now keep in mind that this is um, an open lens that's been left, so you, this star here is creating this entire line by taking a picture of the star over several hours. Okay, so that's one star shown in its movement um, or its apparent movement as the Earth is rotating. So what do we think would be over here in the middle? Again, as we just talked about, Polaris is always in the center of these star trails, and these circular patterns are created if you focus your camera um, towards the North Pole. So here we've got Polaris would be right in the center here. Again, we must be looking at the North Pole to see this view. So we have all of these circular um, images taken. How many hours will have passed to create this view? So if we have complete circles shown around Polaris, this would have to have been taken over a 24-hour period. You have the entire circle of the entire rotation that Earth has taken during a 24-hour period. And in this picture, the same. This would be Polaris in the center, which never appears to move at all. It appears to stay stationary. And all of the stars appear to be moving around Polaris. Okay, so this one also would be looking towards the North Pole. Polaris in the center with circles around. You can see this is one star in its motion. This would be an image that would not be focused at the North Pole. Perhaps you'd be taking this in an east or west direction where you'll not be seeing circular motion. So this is showing different stars and their apparent motion through the sky. So make some really pretty pictures. Um, these views that are taken from telescopes all around the Earth and also actually the Hubble telescope which is um, orbiting Earth also takes beautiful pictures like these. So anytime we see these circular um, star trails it's always Polaris in the center that appears stationary and we can actually measure the arc created by any of these stars to figure out how many hours the camera picture is showing. So if you have full circles this has to be a 24-hour period. Another pretty picture, this would be a side view. Okay, so how many degrees did the stars move from diagram 1 to diagram 2? So here at diagram 1, it says it's 9 p.m., and here in diagram 2, it says it's 11 p.m. And take a look, we've got the Little Dipper here, and we've got the Little Dipper over here, and all the other various constellations, which are different groups of stars that are seen in the sky, are shown moving in this picture. Okay, so the first thing I want to note you to note, the star right here, 
in the handle of the little dipper, this is actually where Polaris is located. Polaris is this uh, the end of the handle of the little dipper. So you'll notice that if you take a look from this picture to this, all of the stars appear to have moved um, towards the left in this picture around this um, Polaris here. Polaris does not seem to move. So you can see this little one, Cepheus, that looks like an upside down house. Over here you'll see that this one has rotated this way. So they all appear to move and circle around Polaris. So if we have how many hours have gone by from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m.? Two hours. So how many degrees would they appear to move? So if two hours, if the stars move 15 degrees per hour, they will have moved a total of 30 degrees. How can we find Polaris? Again, it is always located in the handle of the little dipper. And it's also the star that does not seem to move, that everything else is revol revolving or rotating around. It's the only one that didn't move. What hemisphere must you be in? So, if we're looking at Polaris, what hemisphere do we have to be in? And we would have to be in the northern hemisphere. Why? Otherwise, you wouldn't see Polaris. If you were south of the equator, you would not be seeing Polaris or the Little Dipper. What direction must you be looking? If we're looking at Polaris and we know it's located above the North Pole, we must be looking towards the north. Okay, so some things to think about while we're looking at pictures of stars. What direction do the stars appear to move? So notice from here to here, which way do they appear to be moving? They are moving from east to west. So this would be the east. This side of the picture is the east, and this side is the west. They are moving from east towards the west. Notice the sun also rises in the east and sets in the west. That's the motion that it has. Earth rotates counterclockwise from west to east. So everything's going to appear to rise in the east and set in the west. We can look at some models of that in class so that you can help see that. In what direction do the stars appear to move as they rise? So if these um, are showing you rising, okay, the rising motion of a star. Keep in mind, to see rising, you always have to be looking towards the east. Okay, but they always, if it's rising, are moving upwards and towards the right. And you have to be looking in the east sky. How about if they are setting? If stars, such as the sun, are setting, you're always going to be moving downward and also to the right. So you can draw these little arrowheads in on each of those diagrams. And we must be looking in the west sky if it's setting. So what causes the stars to appear to move? So keep in mind, are the stars actually making circles around Polaris? No, it's actually Earth rotating. So Earth's rotation is what causes these apparent motions. The real motion is Earth's rotation. Now planets. Another cool thing that you can sometimes see, um, I'll, I'll always let you know, and sometimes you'll see it posted on Facebook that there's uh, planets that you can see in the night sky. Okay, the word planet means wanderer. So back in the day, before you know, we had the technology that we have now, the, um, people noticed that there were certain brighter stars, they thought they were stars, that appeared to move differently than the other stars. And they called them wanderers in the sky. The planets can appear to change position from night to night, so they don't act like the other stars. So they knew there was something different about them. So looking um, from Earth, they don't always look to be in the same place. So Mars is a good example of this. Since we are on Earth, and Mars is one orbit away from us, so it's a little bit further from the Sun, we would be moving faster in our orbit than Mars is. Okay, so there are times when we are actually passing Mars by in our orbit. When that happens, if we're seeing Mars in the sky, say, you know, it's a, a bright orange, um, it looks like a bright orange star in the sky, It'll, if you're seeing um, Mars from this position, Okay, and now we're seeing at this position, here, here. Notice that all of a sudden it's going to look like Mars is moving backward compared to us. So if you're seeing it, it'll appear that Mars is actually moving backwards in the sky. Just like if you are driving next to another car 
and you start to go a little faster and you're still looking at the passengers in the car next to you, they'll kind of look like they're moving backwards, but really it's your relative motion that's moving faster. So since you're moving faster, the person next to you can look like they're now moving backwards. The same thing is happening with Mars and sometimes with other planets. When they appear to be moving backwards, this is called retrograde motion, and this is due to the fact that we are actually just passing Mars by in our orbit. So we, as we swing past Mars, it'll look like it's moving backwards, but it's just an illusion. If a celestial object changes position in respect to a constellation, it's most likely a planet. So if a planet looks to be changing position over the course of nights, stars are so far away that they never really appear to be moving in that kind of fashion. So if something looks like it's moving from night to night, that's why it's called a wanderer from back in the, you know, in the day. This is because it's a planet. So, again, explaining motion. So, in the early days, we assumed, people assumed, that everything revolved around the Earth. Of course, that's all we knew, our home planet, and we assumed that just as we see today, the sun is moving, you know, the moon appears in different places in the sky, we see planets moving, we assumed that we were the center of the universe, and everything moved around us. This is now referred to as a geocentric model. So let's talk about what this would mean. Uh, we've discussed in the past the word geo is another word if we're talking about geology, geography. We're always talking about the earth. So geo means earth. And centric is just like what it sounds like, center. So this model shows earth at the center of the universe and with the stars, planets, and all other objects revolving around the Earth. So, of course, we now know this to not be true, but back a couple thousand years ago, actually, unfortunately, they only proved this not to be true only a couple hundred years ago, but we'll get to that in a minute. This model was able to explain all the apparent motions of the stars, the sun, and the moon. Um, unfortunately, it took some really complex explanations to explain how planets moved. They had to come up with all these little funky motions called epicycles to show why things appeared to move backwards. And also, it couldn't explain why the Foucault pendulum works the way it works. So here's a picture of our geocentric model. You can see Earth here at the center, and of course the moon is revolving around Earth, as it always does. And you can see all the planets are placed in orbit around the Earth, and the Sun is also placed in orbit around the Earth, and they put it three, three orbits out from Earth. Um, because the planets sometimes appear to move backwards, they made these little complicated epicycles where they thought that a planet like Jupiter not only moved in its orbit, but then would make these little loop-de-loops as it moved along, which was what made it look to move backwards. Um, Ptolemy was the creator of the geocentric system. He came up with this model to try and explain motions, and this took some time to disprove. So the next model that came about, and this was brought up, several hundred years ago by Copernicus. Unfortunately, he was not treated very well. Um, not many people were interested in hearing that the Earth was not the center of the universe. We really had quite a complex feeling that we were oh so important. So he came up with the heliocentric model. So let's think, what could helio mean? Helio is, means sun. So in this model, we've got the sun-centered model. Again, centric means center. And this was not proven until 1851. So that's not even 200 years ago. So up until then, we still believed that Earth was at the center of the universe. The heliocentric model says that sun is at the center and that Earth is rotating on an imaginary axis. The Earth is revolving around the sun. The moon revolves around the Earth. And this provided much simpler explanations for all of the different observations that were made by scientists. You know, we're saying that the sun was at the center and not the earth. It was not a very popular idea, but as we know, it turned out to be true. And so this it come, brings us to why we should accept such a system. In general, this is called keep it simple. When a model explains things much, simple, much more simply, you go with the simpler explanation. The other model for a geocentric had to come up with a lot of very complicated explanations 
And the heliocentric model showed that none of that was true. This was the, cr the simpler, um, correct way to do it. And now with our satellite imagery, we've been able to show for sure that we are not the center of the universe. So here's our heliocentric system um, made famous by Copernicus. This is the system we all know and love, our solar system as we know it. Here's the sun at the center and each of the planets. No crazy epicycles or any you know difficult, um, complicated explanations. And here's our accepted system today. And that is the end of section 9.2, apparent motion of the stars and the planets. See you next time.